Hey guys, good morning, happy Monday. It is Miss K and I wanted to walk you through virtually what you have to do for the week because I made slides and I want to show you guys exactly what you need to do so that there's no confusion. Normally we would be doing this in class, but here we are. So what you're seeing right now is work for the week. It is your pre-unit assessment. We are jumping into Amplify work. So that's going to be what we're going to be doing. I'm going to go over some vocabulary words, some slides with you. And then the last thing that you have to do is answer some questions, which is very much like in the beginning of the Balanced Forces unit, how you gave your initial thoughts on why you think the train is floating and what is happening to make it work. So um, we're gonna go over, if I can get my slides to work, there we go. So day one is for today. I labeled them in two days, um, but you can take the whole week. So you're gonna be getting work on Mondays and then you have until Sunday to hand it in to me. So our new unit is called Becoming Biomimicry Engineers. And I just want to show you guys that we're jumping into a unit about living things and how they stay alive, but we're taking on the role as engineers again. So you can read through the slides. I'm not going to read every single one to you. Um, but we're going to be working on problems, um, much like engineers do, uh, solving problems and seeing how engineers and living things are connected. So when you look at these photos, what do you notice? Based on the photographs, what do you think engineers do? And we should have some prior knowledge because we acted as engineers in our balancing forces unit. Engineers work on many different kinds of problems. An engineer is a person who uses science knowledge to design something in order to solve a problem. So this is the um, definition of that. So you can either take notes when I'm showing the slides or I will be giving you a glossary of words that you need to know. It's also in the last page of your investigation notebook in our new um, unit. There's also a YouTube link if you like to watch the video. A word that you're gonna be hearing a lot is organism. So an organism is um, a living thing. So when we are continuing on learning about organisms, you're going to be seeing this word a lot. We will be getting messages from a lead engineer so that we can help them figure out a problem. So her email to us is, hello, biomimicry engineers. We are excited that you are working with our engineering firm. We often get ideas for designs from studying organisms. We have been studying grove snails and we need your help to learn more about them and to get ideas for designs. Here's a diagram that shows some of the parts of the body of a grove snail. So what do you notice about the grove snail's body? So here I put a diagram and then I also put a real photo so that you can see how they differ. Just take a minute to observe its body. This is our biomimicry handbook. So just like we do in class, we will be reading text. Some text I will be reading to you, some text I will be putting a, um, a link up for you to have it read to you, and sometimes I'll just post the pages, which is what I'm doing today since we're only looking at a few of them. But the word biomimicry is really important here. And we are going to touch on what that means 
in one second. So take a minute to read this. and then be able to summarize what you just read. These are two terms that we are also gonna be talking about, biomimicry and trait. So I put this picture here of the zebra and the giraffe because in ELA we talk about physical traits and also character traits, which are very different. So in this unit, we're gonna be talking about physical traits, which is something that you can observe about an organism like the color or size. Your first assignment is to do a three, two, one on a piece of paper or straight in a dojo message. To write three new words you learned and use two of them in a sentence, two interesting facts you read about, and one question you still have about what you read or just something that you're wondering. This is technically day two. Introducing the grove snail population. Now, this is the growth salem, and we are gonna be learning about them and studying how they live. So a group of growth snails living in a specific area is really what we're gonna be looking at. A bunch of the same kind of living thing or organism is called a population. So that's another word that you will be hearing a lot of. So on the top picture, there's a snail with a yellow shell, and on the bottom one is a snail with a banded shell it looks kind of swirly. So the engineering firm sent these photographs of the two types of snails in this population, snails with yellow shells and snails with banded or striped shells. They also sent a bar graph for us to observe and analyze, but before we look at that, I just wanted to review for you what a bar graph was, because you did chapter two in Go Math a long time ago. So I just wanted to put this up so that you can remember that there's a scale, there's a title, there are categories, there's an X and Y axis, and you need to really know what you're looking at before you can analyze it. Here's the data that we are gonna be looking at. So the snail population is from 10 years ago and also now. So we're looking at it and kind of comparing it. First, what do you see? What are your initial thoughts about what you're looking at? So when we look at a graph like that, you have to look at colors and differences that they have. Are the numbers going up? Do they have the same scale? What are you wondering? What are you noticing? So 10 years ago, there were 410 grove snails with yellow shells and 300 with banded shells. If we add them up, the total number of snails in that population was 710. Now, the population is only 655. There are only 80 grove snails with yellow shells and 575 with banded shells. So what's happening there? We got another message, so let's take a look. We have been studying a population of grove snails to learn more about them. We've noticed that some of the snails in the population are surviving well, but not all of them. Over the past 10 years, the number of snails with yellow shells in the population has gotten smaller, which means they are not surviving well. Can you help us figure out why? So the message says that the snails with the yellow shells in the population aren't surviving well. What does this mean? So even though the snails with yellow shells aren't surviving well, this isn't true for the snails, all of them in the population. The number of snails with banded shells got larger over the last 10 years. So the snails with banded shells are surviving well. Their population increased, which means that they were successfully finding mates and reproducing. 
So this is our unit question. So you can remember that in the classroom, we always have this up and we have the chapter questions up as well. So throughout this unit, we are going to be investigating this question. Why are different organisms more likely or less likely to survive in an environment? So a specific environment. So if we're talking about snails, we are not talking about an ocean animal. We are talking about snails, we are not talking about an Arctic animal. So we have to also think about what ecosystem or biome we are talking about. So to make sure this is the right population to study, to get ideas for our biomimicry design. Our chapter one question is why are the snails with yellow shells not surviving well? So we're really gonna be focusing on this question this week and next week. And now we are at our writing initial explanation. So remember the pre-assessment, um, I don't care if you don't know, if you're confused, if you get it wrong, it's okay. I just wanna know what your initial ideas are before we start um, jumping in and they're not being graded. So parents, please don't help your child answer this question. I just wanna know what they're thinking. So we're gonna be thinking about why the snails with the yellow shells aren't surviving well and explaining why we think initially that is happening. So looking at this photograph, this is where the snails live. So just take a minute to look at that environment. It might help you get some ideas. And remember the two snails that we're looking at are the one with the yellow shell and the one with the banded shell. So this is your assignment. What are some things that organisms such as snails need to survive? Why are the snails with yellow shells not surviving well? Why might the snails with banded shells be surviving better than the snails with yellow shells? So really, you need to look back at that picture and think about why are the yellow shells not surviving here? What's happening? So you can print this um, and write on it or use loose leaf and answer each question or just message me directly on Dojo. I will also accept it to my email, whatever works for you. Um, that's really it. You have until Sunday to get this back to me and I will also be posting some extra credit and extra readings if you'd like to get some done, but they are not mandatory. Okay, bye.